Good evening, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us this evening for the sixth group remote singing live stream concert presented by members of C4, the Choral Composer Conductor Collective based in New York, and Inversion Ensemble in Austin, Texas. We've named our concert this evening, Where Water Meets Sky. And we're confident that you'll see why as we perform the five pieces on the program. You can follow along with the concert program at C4 dot, excuse me, c4 ensemble.org slash remote dash concert. Getting right into it, we'll begin this evening with music from Herman Barbosa, one of the finalists in C4's Ignite Composition Competition. The piece entitled Blue is a movement from Herman's larger work, Chroma Saturacion, which is itself based on the color-related art installation of Carlos Cruz Diaz of the same name. Blue came out of a personal loss for Hermann and describing the piece he wrote, always related to water, blue represents the immersion in the protagonist's own mind. It starts as a drizzle and turns into a deluge. The music reflects the feelings of depression, sadness and isolation while working as a healing phase. Blue is the permission I give myself to cry.
everyone. I'm going to tell you some more things. And thank you so much for watching us, uh, watching our live stream. Yes, we are indeed performing live in real time across time zones. So we have no way of patching up any mistakes that we made. I mean, of course, there won't be any, but you know, <laughs> if there were. For some pieces on this concert, we are using a click track that you cannot hear, hopefully. For this second piece, we're using a video score and a semiconductor, which is our way of saying that in this live remote medium, the conducting has been a little more like cueing due to the latency or delay that we're experiencing between voices. However, for the final piece on this program, we're actually going to try singing live with a full-blown conductor experience in time, which we have not tried on a concert before. You are witnessing hi history, folks. <laughs> Also, I'm sure you've noticed that there is a live chat on the YouTube. Please feel free to tell us how amazing we are uh, there in lieu <laughs> of applause. <laughs> and, <laughs> and if you have any questions about the pieces for the composers, about how we're doing all these amazing things, um, please put those questions in the chat. And after the concert, we will answer those questions in a live talk back that we'll have uh, with the composers of tonight's pieces, along with the rest of us who sang them. Please stick around for that at the end. And now, Adrian Inglis will talk about her piece. Well, I'm so grateful to C4 and Inversion for including this mixed chorus version of La Ciudad Sumergida on this program. I'm grateful to North Central College of Napierville, Illinois, and Dr. Ramona Wist for commissioning the piece originally. The opening stanza of the poem Rio de la Plata en Lluvia by Argentine poet Alfonsina Storni and the nature soundtrack capture the mood of a river, a city, the cloudy sky, and the poet's own profound melancholy. The sound of rain creates both the ambiance of a misty day on the river and the sensation of cathartic crying. The city's reflection on the river's surface gives the illusion that the city is submerged in the water. The apop apocalyptic images of a submerged city and of tears overflowing from the chalice sky eerily foreshadow rising sea levels due to climate change. Give me a minute, I gotta get the video ready. <laughs> <laughs> a concert and a movie. <laughs> okay. Sorry about all that, folks. 
Thank you, and Brian. Let's see, let's see if it works now. No, it won't work because, oh yes, it will. Okay. <laughs> We're gonna try it. Sorry about that. Suspense is good. <laughs> Thank you, Adrian, for that beautiful piece. Yeah. And for the beautiful video that went with it. Oh, thank yes, you. Thank Thanks you. for singing it so beautifully. And thank you, Maureen, for that gorgeous solo. Um, our next piece is The Campers at Kitty Hawk by Michael Delira. Um, and this piece celebrates the joy and triumph of the first flight out of Kitty Hawk by the Wright Brothers. This piece is a C4 favorite. We first performed it in 2015, and it became a very big success it became our encore piece it was something we all just really loved um but this is a very fast piece it's very rhythmic very homophonic but we are trying to push the boundaries of this live remote performance space and we are actually going to do this for you live with singers across the country right here on 
this stream, which is pretty exciting. So please enjoy a personal favorite, the campers at Kitty Hawk. Jitters at five and eight. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It matters to us. <laughs> <laughs> it does, it does. <laughs> That was technical speak for something. Or <laughs> it's a mystery. <laughs> um, okay. Hold on a minute. On December 17, 1903, Bishop Wright of the United Brethren received a telegram from his boys Wilbur and Orwell, who'd gotten it into their heads to spend their vacation in a little camp out on the dunes of the North Carolina coast with a homemade glider. They got together themselves the telegram read. Spend the vacation in Against twenty one mile away, such a head and ten thousand the moon, such a head from this one hour's day. The figures were a little wrong, but the fact remains a couple of young bicycle clothes mechanics from Dayton, Ohio, had designed and flown for the first time ever a practical airplane. In those days, flying machines was a bit of a they were practical mechanics, practical mechanics, but they did everything they built it themselves. They hit a kitty hawk on the green dunes and sound effects that stripped salt to have to receive it. All the heavy girls and smooth and dirty fish on the streets clapping across the salt marshes. They were alone there and figured out the loose sand was at a salt pass. Anything they could find to fall in, getting off again and again. From Kill Devil Hill, they learned to fly. Was it that work? <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. That worked. Yes, very much. All right. So, um, hi everyone. Uh, I just want to say, in case anyone didn't know, uh, a thing happened to all of us about a year ago. Um, <laughs> I don't know if it's still going on where you are, but and out of necessity, uh, we all went online and we we tried doing a thing. And now look at this. This is our sixth concert that we've done so far. Uh, and, and this incredibly, I don't, we don't even know what to call ourselves anymore because 
We're C4 and we're in version ensemble, members of both groups kind of merged together in this amazing conglomeration of people who just wanted to keep singing together. And, uh, and, and we've, look what we've gotten to do. And we're hoping that you're all enjoying the concert this evening. And if you are enjoying the concert this evening, we strongly, yes, thank you for that introduction. <laughs> we strongly encourage you to help support us. And uh, I know this is trying times for everybody and support may not be something, but if you're able, we would greatly appreciate it. Um, you can look in uh, the link, there should be a link on there to our PayPal, and you can always go to our website, uh, c4ensemble.org, and make a donation there as well. Uh, thank you for the support. You're supporting us just by being here with us, and we're so happy that you are. But if you can take that one step further and um, help us financially, we'd greatly appreciate it. Now, quick change into the next subject and the next song on the concert, which is called Snow. And uh, I'm just going to want to read the text to you. Um, the text is Blanket of Snow. Snow on top, it must feel cold, the chill moon shining down. Snow on the bottom, it must feel heavy, hundreds of people on you. Snow in the middle, it must feel lonely, no earth or sky to look at. These are words by Kaneko Misutsu, who was a Japanese poet and songwriter who left us far too early. She uh, unfortunately took her own life right before her 27th birthday. But these poems that she left us um, were a great, great collection of children's poetry. And Misa, um, who wrote this piece, um, who herself was Japanese and, and actually did the translation of the poem herself to English for this setting. Um, uh, 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 Misa was a very good friend of mine, and sadly, we also lost her about two years ago, in two th or three years ago now, in 2018. Uh, I miss her dearly, and I'm so happy to be presenting this piece, Snow, to you tonight, uh, and I hope that you enjoy. Now, let me take care of all my things that I need to do so you can listen to it and enjoy. No.
gorgeous piece. Is that me that's supposed to be talking? <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess possibly. so. Sorry, I was so. muted. I was going to say, uh, everyone remember to uh, stay for the talk back that we're going to have right after this, but I will give it to Josh to introduce the last piece. Fantastic. <laughs> so the next piece on the program is Sunset by Christopher Flood, which is based on the author's senior composition project entitled A Child's Gift for Westminster Choir College and utilizes a text by the student at the same college. It was premiered as a winner of Austin-based Inversion Ensemble, that's us, uh, <laughs> second emerging uh, composer contest in September 2019. Coincidentally, at its premiere, the piece that directly comes af came after it was The Last Transmissions of Amelia Earhart, which we uh, did with this ensemble about oh, six months ago, something like that. This piece comes from a set called Watercolors, and the connection between physical mediums of water and paint with the ethereal fleeting sunset are evocative both of our com concert theme as well as music in general. The harmonies are rich and they're lush with jazz-like usage of higher tertian sonorities which shimmer in, in the choir, which it turns out is a whole lot easier if we're in person. <laughs> Every single singer you see in front of you has spent a long time learning how to accurately synchronize breath and sound and expression with people right next to them. And it's this sort of piece, this one entirely, that gives singers warm fuzzies. We've had to largely work against that uh, in entirely in our instincts, in our concerts, because we hear things about a half second later than we expect them to. And we're on to our, note, uh, our next note already when, we've, when we're hearing the things in our ears. We've handled that in various ways, as you've heard already tonight. Some of our pieces involve a hopefully unheard click track, uh, which gives us a lifeline of, of real time to grab onto. Uh, even if we hear the fellow members of our section just a little bit later. So we listen for blend and vowel and everything else we know, but we don't listen for time. These last few projects, though, we've noticed that we're getting pretty darn good at this delicate dance. It's kind of like unlinking your timekeeping brain uh, from your ears. You just have to <laughs> listen back a half second for musical information, but also sing exactly in time. So tonight we're going to try this little tightrope dance with no click track net beneath us, just a conductor, me. Uh, in Christopher Flood's original concert notes for this piece, he noted that watercolors was really about the gift of being able to grow in patience and how that, has that, uh, uh, that water has quenched his thirst in life. Our patience for learning and realizing a new medium has really nourished this ensemble in new ways as well. Enjoy Christopher Flood's Sunset from Watercolors. I seem to have lost the ability to give pitches. Would somebody else do so? With my power outage, that may have knocked something else out. Thank you.
think that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Except for thank talking back. Yeah, thank you, everybody. For thank uh, you. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Brian. Um, I thank guess you uh, I can talk now because uh, everything I've screwed up, I've already screwed up. So <laughs> 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 um, yes, everybody, uh, feel free to stay for our um, talk back session. We're going to have a couple more of the composers to augment the um, Adrian, who's already here uh, singing with us. Um, and we'll ask them some questions. So um, give us a couple minutes. We're going to try and get those composers on to this crazy Jamulus and Zoom configuration we have. And then we'll uh, take your questions. Feel free to post your questions in the Zoom, uh, not the Zoom chat, the, uh, the YouTube chat. <laughs> and we'll take a look at that with a 45 second delay and answer your questions. <laughs> Great. We'll be right back. So now we can see if uh, Herman and Bettina are able to join us. Uh, meanwhile. And Chris? Uh, I think Chris is unable to join oh. us this time. He was with us last time to talk about his piece. And I think this time he's not here. Mm -hmm. uh, while we wait for them, um, I guess let me start with Adrian, just so I'm not forgetting. If we don't have any other composers currently in the room for tonight, <laughs> right? Okay, I don't want to miss anyone. So Adrian, um, do you want to talk for a minute or two about the genesis of this piece and how, you, how it got to be what it is? Uh, sure, thank you, and thanks for doing such a beautiful job. This is actually the platform for which the piece was intended. Uh, having been able to, I've been lucky enough to participate in these concerts and kind of getting the hang of, of Jamulus and Zoom and how it works, wanted to try to write something that used that used the platform and tried it for best advantage and um, I was completely blown away by David's uh, video score from last summer and thought maybe I could do something like that and and did an earlier one that we did uh, our light in our night which also had a video score but I thought maybe it could be scrolling and so uh, trying to do that but uh, the the poetry was written by uh, the, in 1938 and it was uh, one of the last poems that Alfonsina Storni wrote before she committed suicide, took her own life by w just walking into the sea. She's, she'd been writing poetry about the sea and water for years and years and years and had a very uh, distressing life. Was an early feminist in Argentina and uh, then came down with cancer and it was very painful and uh, she just uh, took her own life at one point, just shortly after this poem was written. So you can kind of tell the the heaviness of the the, the topic. Um, I we didn't provide a translation, did we? So maybe I could. I did. Uh, uh, I can I can put it up here. I think. Uh, I believe it's in the program notes. It's, it's okay. in the program, but I'll I'll show it to you briefly. It might cause us to cut out for a minute, but people can read it. Okay. Nebli Velado, which is um, uh, a combination of neblina and velado, which is fog combined with veiled. So uh, that was kind of fun to, to explore that color for that word. So uh, should I? Great. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. No, I don't want to. No, 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 no. I'm just babbling. <laughs> okay, great. That is a great thing to do. Let me turn my video on. Um, so I, I saw a question in the chat about the technical stuff. Um, Brian, a little closer to the mic. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I, um, I, I saw a question in the chat about the technical stuff. So briefly, we are using Jamulus. I saw someone was going to ask that before. Um, Jamulus, well, so Zoom is a, Zoom is great. Uh, it does what it does, but it's not really good for, um, high quality audio, it would it would be very strange and I don't think we would do that good a job and my hair is crazy because there's a <laughs> pandemic going on. But you know, I'm, not, I'm just gonna fuss with that while I'm talking to you so you don't notice. Um, 
uh, <laughs> so, but, but Zoom is great for video, so we have a solution for audio which is called Jamulus. It's an audio-only app that does a good job of um, connecting people together in real time with relatively low latency. It's not the absolute lowest latency thing out there, but it's reasonably low, it's free, and it handles lots of participants, which not everything does. So we use that for our, um, for our audio, and then we simultaneously have a Zoom conference for our, for our video, and then we combine them together and stream them to YouTube. Um, and I think someone put uh, a link in the chat with the details gory details of how we do that um, in case you're interested in replicating that setup. It's on our website, c4ensemble.org, and I think they gave you the more direct link to it. Um, but if you have any other questions, let us know. We'd be happy to talk to you about it. Um, Can I make a comment yes. about uh, Adrian's piece? Uh, there was... Uh, Get closer to the mic. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to say that there was... This was like she was saying, this is a new medium, and so there's a little bit of back and forth. So how should the graphic look like? How We tried it one way, and then uh, Adrian changed it a little bit, and then we, you know, where exactly should the shading be and how fast should it go? And it was uh, really, really cool to be part of that uh, process as well, like a little workshop thing happening. Well, I appreciated everybody's input because I wanted it to be as readable as possible. And who knows, maybe the audience was singing along because <laughs> you, you, you could. <laughs> uh, and I did tone back the, the, the lightning flashes. Apparently, they were a little bit startling. Uh, <laughs> it was interesting. We came up with this thing about sort of defining about where we should be in the music, which is the, the little vertical uh, white space as the, as the music is scrolling by. And then uh, you couldn't see it, or the audience hopefully couldn't see it, but I was semi-conducting, as we <laughs> say, uh, giving a couple of cues sort of within that general area <laughs> where we should be. Now you guys go, now you, you guys go, that sort of thing. Uh, and it just sort of, we'd sort of found a way to make it work, um, um, a as has been the case with all these pieces. There's some pieces where we're holding up numbers for cues, and uh, meanwhile, someone else is going over top of that. And so each piece is uh, calls for different techniques. And as we saw the last piece, Josh was actually full out conducting, not semi-conducting. And it's the we first were one we've had, though. I mean, every mm -hmm. other one, yeah. we've invented a brand new technique almost every single concert for every single new mm -hmm. piece. I mean, it's, it's just, I mean, they're brand new <laughs> conducting <laughs> techniques in a lot of mm -hmm. cases. There's also the whole thing of, you know, if I'm conducting and I'm doing this, right. my hands are out of the frame. You <laughs> can't <laughs> tell what the hell I'm doing. So. It's great for technique, right? <laughs> uh, kind of. <laughs> so I'm gonna, I swear, when I get back to in-person conducting, I'm going to be here. You know, <laughs> <laughs> also, I'm going to be missing my mute button. No. <laughs> so, um, I have a question for the singers in the group. I, I think if they're still around, some of my compatriots in another chorus that I sing in uh, which is considering the Jamulus route, um, I, I, they might be interested to know what, what you found to be the, the major hurdles either. I feel like there are some technical hurdles, but there are also some sort of artistic ones mm -hmm. where you have to learn to do something in particular. And uh, of course, I have all the nasty technical things here on the engineering end, but hopefully you don't have it as bad where you are. <laughs> but if anyone wants to talk about what's involved in that? Yeah, um, I think something interesting is it's spatial. When you're in a choir and you're in a space, you hear everyone in relation to where you are. You also hear the reverberation of the space, especially if you're singing in a church or something. Um, and all of that makes a huge impact on what you hear and how you're blending in a way that I personally didn't realize until we started doing this. Because when you're online and you have your headphones on, you're hearing everyone at the same time in a dry space. Um, and if your headphones are fully on, you can't even really hear yourself. We're all, we actually all yeah. have it like a little off not. of our ear. <laughs> You know, so we can try to hear ourselves, and it's a it's a really different spatial thing that takes a lot of getting used to. Also, the distance to microphone. If it, if oh, anybody yes. was watching Angela during Kitty Hawk, oh, she yeah. I think she was sprinting back and forth <laughs> yeah. in her apartment. 
That's right. You know, there are a few, uh, uh, there are a few comments, uh, questions in the chat. I wonder if we should get to some of those. Yeah, in, totally. Uh, there's the, um, uh, Fahad asked, uh, I'm curious if you think this trend of aleatoric non-metric pieces will have any lasting impact on your post-pandemic programming. Ooh. Post-pandemic yeah, programming. Yeah, post-pandemic <laughs> programming, <laughs> first of all, great term. Can we talk about post-pandemic? Well, we were doing Please. aleatoric before That's amazing. This. Triple right. P. I, I mean, that's a, it's an open, I, I think there's probably going to be a lot more of it in the average choir mm -hmm. at, uh, and, um, and the ability to do it well. I think we'll um, just, I think we're going to see a lot more people writing in this style and, and getting used to taking advantage of this and maybe using it more in choruses that are beginning and not as used to... Um, tempo and also mm. uh, alternatively it's a good way to break a habit of always knowing that you're always locked on and encouraging mm. people who think like a metronome to be more free because we had um the first piece we did where like a bunch of us were going ah, da, 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 you know but we're not all supposed to do the same meter that we're encouraged to have some people go slow and some people go fast and it's funny how we all start out exactly the same like our brain is like we have to stay on the beat that's the rules <laughs> if we, we can be free what does free mean oh my god there's no it's it's interesting it's, it's a weird way to learn to sing and i feel like it benefits both sides so i hope more people write this type of stuff you know yeah it, it it's yeah I agree with you. You know what I mean? <laughs> like you have to de it's unlearn everything that you've learned. S so we just we just talked about uh, you know that we're inventing new techniques. That was a great example. Unfortunately, that like that's a piece that we had like two techniques, which was be free, be in time. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it turned out what uh, Adrian wanted was neither of those two <laughs> techniques. Yes. <laughs> right? yeah. like, uh, and so we we yeah. borrowed something that we took from martyrs. I think no, it was from. I, was, it was, was I can't it remember when we first did feathering. I think it was martyrs. It wasn't martyrs. You mean, you mean yeah. flocking? Yeah. Flocking. 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 It was, the, it was originally crows. flocking. I and think then it was martyrs. Then it became feathering. Um, <laughs> it, I think it, it might have been. the calling of the crows. Right? Mm -hmm. it, there was the flocking right, in, right. Uh, in Gather and that yeah. sort of thing. And then martyrs had the one solo line that people had to glom onto. It's just like, yeah, well. Yeah, that was I, the flocking. And so like that technique, the idea of having people doing things aleatorically but but within certain parameters is not one that we had really tried and not one that I'm aware has really been uh, explored a whole great I mean yeah. that fiddling with that is was kind of fun yeah. it's, it's a, interesting it's psychologically when you see uh, you know an entrance of the alto lines and it's all you know the regular looking notes not these you know sort of whole notes with big ties on them but regular metered looking notes with a rhythm to it you instinctually want to mm -hmm. lock on lock in mm -hmm. a line mm -hmm. yeah. with your partners and in that piece the whole idea was no make it fuzzy you know <laughs> make it flocky <laughs> Mm -hmm. and and be a little behind or a little ahead of your neighbors. It's the complete opposite of the kitty hawk, basically. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Kitty hawk, we're like, don't fall off, no matter what <laughs> happens. Yeah. 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 But yeah. this one, it, it was kind of nice to have s such drastic differences in one concert. Yeah. I was really happy mm -hmm. that we did that. Dan, I'm yeah. hoping that there's more rep written like this, even when we're all in person again, mm -hmm. because it really does break things up, and it has such a different feel to it. And I, I also feel that some of the aleatoric pieces can be more accessible to different choirs, mm, which yeah. is mm -hmm. a good thing. Mm -hmm. and it could, there, there could be experiments with, uh, you know, spacing out in a hall, in a Ooh, concert hall, yeah, yeah, and yeah. getting some of that. So, um, you yeah, know, that. Because naturally, anyone who's ever been in a very large, adventurous, like, church choir in a huge building, and they're like, let's all be on the same beat. But you're, <laughs> it never works out. <laughs> yeah, because yeah the good distance. luck. But pieces like this would encourage that for <laughs> location specific mm -hmm. yeah. music. So cool. if I can uh, note that I think may we may have Herman with us now. Yes. We do. I forgot to email him the link. So we have for Bettina. Oh, and Bettina. Well, and Bettina. Um, oh, and Bettina here too. Yeah. Excellent. I'm, I'm here, but I don't have a Zoom link. Ah, and you've got the you've got the um, Mickey Mouse. Now. The Mickey Mouse thing. Chip that's all right. You you sound like you're on helium, but that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, just don't try singing a B flat. We will put the Zoom link in um, the chat for you. Yes. Yeah, so yep. can, I got you. I got it. Um. I win. So oh. <laughs> Josh is the fastest <laughs> Zoom, Zoom link, so link paster. Welcome to you both. Um, for the audience out there, Herman is the composer of the first piece, Blue, and Bettina is another uh, old friend of Misa Ogasawa. Wait. Ogasawa? Ogasawa. Ogasawa. Yes, the composer of Snow. Um, so. Um, Welcome to you both. While you're busy getting set up in um, in Zoom, we can just talk converse with you audibly. Um, 
I don't know who wants to start. Herman, since I happen to see your name right there, do you want to say anything about about Blue? Or are you still busy setting up? Can you hear me now? We can yeah. hear you. Yeah. yeah. You're quiet. Sorry. You're a little quiet. So be quiet. So make sure you're as close to the mic as I am here. Perfect. Yes. Nice. Perfect. Yay. Perfect. I don't know if you can see me because mm -hmm. I cannot see myself. You can Not see your yet. name. No. no. Not yet. Although I don't know nice why. <laughs> <laughs> I am turning my, my video on and off, but uh, let me let me see. Yeah, it's just all black. We can we oh. can just do audio. Yeah. It's fine. Oh, there we go. Oh, hey, there there go. Hi. Hi. Here, yeah. right, great. And welcome, exist. Bettina. Likewise. Hi, Bettina. Um, so yes, Herman, do you want to say a couple words about about Blue? Well. First of all, I wanted to thank you because uh, Sephora has given me uh, like the biggest joys in the last year. Uh, last year when I was, uh, when I received Mario's message uh, telling me that I was one of the finalists of Ignite uh, uh, competition. And these years, uh, well, even before you had started singing, I was uh, already crying. Oh. <laughs> from the piece and well I can say about blue that it is a, it's a journey it was a journey for me to to try to find the colors in life even when you see everything in grayscale so mm -hmm. I think it's the the point where where you let go and you'll cry if you have to cry and you scream if you have to scream but it will just let everything out and that way you, you feel better. So uh, the piece, uh, as you said, is dedicated to, to my brother. And I think the, the whole piece, and especially this part, is one of, my, one of the accomplishments that I feel more proud of. And I'm very thankful uh, that you you help me share it with the world. Great, thanks. Um, all right, and uh, Bettina, I don't know if you want to say any words about the piece and the composer and the text and all that stuff. Well, I guess it depends on, do I still sound like a chipmunk? <laughs> you yeah. sound like a soprano. Um, <laughs> Come on! Um, I'll try to be much lower. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it's not worth fixing at the okay. moment, so just, just okay. don't worry about it. <laughs> then I won't say much because I don't want it to be laughable. But, <laughs> but um, yeah, Misa, I was Misa's uh, U.S. sponsor, and we worked mm -hmm. together on this project for many years, and I'm continuing the project now, but we were setting music of Mizuzu Kaneko, um, who also, Adrian, is interesting. I thought you were talking about M the uh, Mizuzu when you were <laughs> saying oh. it's very similar, very wow. similar. She um, committed suicide at a very young age in her early 20s and walked into the ocean. Mm -hmm. She w um, wrote uh, children's poetry that was, you know, just sort of stark and beautiful and right to the point and had a very, very sad life. And so... I, I love this piece, Snow, and you did it beautifully. I must say, the three of you were gorgeous. Oh. So. Thank you. Uh, excellent. Um, I don't know if anyone's found, uh, seen any more questions in the YouTube chat that we should answer, the people monitoring there. Mm. We uh, can't hear Josh you, Josh. Is, um, very quiet. Josh is Sorry. <laughs> I, was, I was just lip syncing. Somebody said <laughs> something about white space and squares earlier, but uh, I, I missed that one. I, I don't see anything recently. Oh. Was it a typography comment? <laughs> <laughs> Did we answer about the more adding color stuff when we get back? Yeah, yeah, we did oh. ask yeah, that. We yeah. Actually, and I think Karen mentioned something about how we're going to try and keep that kind of uh, oh, intimacy, intimacy yeah. at, uh, with uh, that we have here. And I, I am 100% with you there. Yeah. Um, this is a beautiful thing for choirs. By the way, if anyone doesn't recognize that fancy word, aleatoric, it, it mm. just means that instead of things being very metered and regular rhythmically, that there's freedom to it. There's certain material that a part is given 
and Alto say, go, you have this repeating pattern, here's your cue, repeat it, someone else layers their repeating pattern on top of that, and then it changes at some point, and so you have this texture created that is, you know, like that. And oh. I actually, l sorry, I, I like that in Hermann's piece that uh, nope. yeah. there's, <laughs> there's like that, that plus, <laughs> plus the more metered thing where we use a click track and we go back and forth mm -hmm. between. We had that in Trevor's piece also. Mm -hmm. So Stephanie asked a question kind of related. Wha for mm -hmm. the composers, in what ways are the compositional processes differ? I guess it'd probably be worthwhile talking about like how do you compose aleatorically <laughs> versus metrical pieces. It's a lot faster to compose. <laughs> <laughs> well, not always. <laughs> you just it's like, to yeah. 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 Finale doesn't like piece. working that way. You no, have that's to force it that's, to. That's true. <laughs> hide bar lines and have meters with like 24, 18 or whatever. And having you having know, a knowledge you of have Photoshop is more beneficial than composing. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, what did you say, Herman? Herman? Yeah. <laughs> When you have to do the engraving for the electric part, it's a nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> I have to oh, use right. yeah, Illustrator, yeah. so <laughs> oh. I go between the the apps and I go a little crazy. Oh, <laughs> yeah, he's saying he uses Illustrator as well as Finale. Oh, right? wow. So Ado Adobe Illustrator? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Huh. Finale has these capabilities, but they're very finicky and they take a long time to yeah. make everything line up the way it's supposed to line up. Yeah, it wants uh, to organize into beats, and if you're not organizing the beats, you basically have to hide the beats. Yeah, yeah. I did a lot of hiding and not counting measures. <laughs> and just mm -hmm. I, mean, yeah. I think we did, uh, was it last project, a couple of projects ago, we did Demon, uh, Matthew Brown's mm -hmm. piece that yeah. uh, we just, uh, I mean, that's basically just the only thing computer printed is the is the actual staff, and <laughs> yeah. I mean, everything else is hand-drawn, and mm -hmm. right, uh, right. which is also yeah. fun. So great. I guess um, maybe it's about time to wrap up. It's uh, nine, well... 9.30 Eastern, 8.30 Central, <laughs> other 30s in other parts of the world. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, so thank you. I, I don't know if anyone has a need for anything they need to say before we quit. Maybe our next our next concert? Oh, our next concert. Mm. Oh. March something. March 25. March 25th. Yes, yeah. we're going to come at you again with a new, <laughs> fresh batch of Alley <laughs> 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 Oh, somebody <laughs> tell me. We gotta, we've got to sample that somehow into the next <laughs> 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 um, So, yes, um, look, look, for, look for that. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, go to the website for C4 and also for Inversion Ensemble. Yeah. Contribute if you feel so motivated. And Facebook and, and Twitter. And Facebook and Twitter and, and Insta and all the places. All the we have places an email list. That the cool kids hang. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, yes, thank you very much. And I guess with that, we will sign off. Bye. Good night, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for coming. Thank you so much for watching us. Yay.